Remember when Trump tried to get the esteemed journalists of 60 Minutes to actually do their job and cover the Hunter Biden laptop story in the lead up to the 2020 election? You know, this is 60 Minutes. And we can't put on things we can't no, verify. You won't put it on because it's bad for Biden. We can't Look, put on things we can't verify. Leslie, I don't have to discredit you. And that's what you've you discredited me. yourself. You told me that. Leslie, you've discredited yourself. When you say that you're not going to cover Biden, you're going to ask him what flavor ice cream he has, okay? That's not Instead of why did Hunter get three and a half million dollars from Moscow? Instead of why is an energy company paying? Your son, $183,000 a month or whatever they're paying him, and he has no experience in energy. You know, you discredit yourself. I don't have to discredit so, you. So this story about Hunter and his laptop, some repair shop found it. The source is uh, Steve Bannon and Rudy Giuliani. It's official. Hunter Biden's pardon has sent shockwaves through America, and the left is in complete meltdown mode. But leave it to Whoopi Goldberg and The View to take the chaos to new levels. Somehow, in their infinite wisdom, they've managed to blame Donald Trump for Joe Biden's decision to pardon his son. Yes, you heard that right. Today, we're diving into the absurd mental gymnastics on display, the mainstream media's desperate attempts to defend the president, and how this scandal is unraveling what's left of the left's credibility. So grab your popcorn, because this one is a wild ride. Let's start at the circus that is The View. The sparks flew when Alyssa Farah Griffin dared to call out Joe Biden for breaking his promise not to pardon Hunter. Her question was simple. Why lie about it for so long? But Whoopi wasn't having it. In a fiery exchange, she snapped. Stop calling it a lie. This is different from anything we've ever dealt with. Different? Really, Whoopi? Let's rewind. Can you believe that nonsense? And she wasn't done discrediting herself yet. Can you see why trust in the media is at record lows? And you're making this one of the hottest, most important issues in your rallies. It's a very important issue to find out whether or not a man's corrupt who's running for president, who's accepted money from China and from Ukraine and from Russia. All these yeah, things I think that's have an been important investigated issue. and discussed. It's incredible the way you can try and say this and sit there and look me in the eye and say it. He accepted committee. money, his family, from Russia, from Ukraine, from China, and from other places. And his brother, who didn't have experience, became a big builder in Iraq without experience. Take a look at what's going on, Leslie. And then you say how that shouldn't be discussed. I'm saying... It's the biggest scandal out there, Leslie, and you don't cover it. Because it can't be verified. You want to talk I'm about insignificant you. things. I'm telling you. Of course it can be verified. Excuse we, me. We they found the laptop. Verified. Leslie, Leslie. It can't be verified. What can't be verified? The laptop. It wasn't unverified. It wasn't a fake story. It was very much real. And never forget, they impeached Donald Trump for wanting to investigate the very crimes Joe Biden just pardoned his son for. Now, let's go to CNN. They're still defending the president. Apparently, Trump is going to go around and shoot everybody. And uh, if Biden didn't pardon his son, what would happen next? What? You can defend it, but wasn't it a lie that he was not going to pardon him? No, I believe the circumstances have changed. I think that we That's have now have a president coming into office who's talking about firing squads, who's talking about running people uh, around the country and making sure that everyone who's his enemy is going to uh, be punished. These people are nuts. But not to be outdone, the ladies of The View, led by Whoopi Goldberg, have decided that it is Donald Trump's fault that Biden lied and pardoned his son. For years, Joe Biden told the American people, on record, that he wouldn't pardon his son. His press secretary even echoed this sentiment over and over. And yet, here we are. But instead of addressing the obvious betrayal of trust, Whoopi somehow turned the blame onto Donald Trump, claiming, this is a precedent for all of us to open our eyes because we've elected someone who didn't have a drug problem, who knew what he was doing, and he did it. Translation. Biden's actions are justified because, unlike Trump, Hunter was battling addiction.
The mental gymnastics here are truly breathtaking. Can I stop I'd stop when, calling it a lie. Okay, well, well, here's what it says. It's a precedent for all of us to open our eyes because we've elected someone who is in a similar situation, who didn't have a drug problem, who knew what he was doing, who clearly was stood and said, I can do this, and he did it. So I think, for many, many reasons, this is very different than any other situation that we have ever dealt with. The internet reacts. Of course, the internet wasn't about to let this slide. Social media erupted with criticism. One user wrote, Whoopi says Hunter Biden's pardon is fine because he had a drug problem. So, if you're addicted, you're above the law now? Another chimed in. Biden said he wouldn't pardon Hunter. He did. That's literally the definition of a lie, Whoopi. The backlash was swift and brutal, exposing just how out of touch Goldberg and her co-hosts are with the average American. But The View wasn't the only place where logic took a back seat. Over at CNN, commentators pushed a bizarre narrative that Biden's pardon was somehow necessary to counteract Trump's alleged plans for firing squads and rounding up enemies. Yes, firing squads. This is where we are now. One CNN host even claimed, the circumstances have changed. Biden had no choice but to protect his son. Protect him? From what exactly? Accountability? Even MSNBC, a typically safe space for Biden, struggled to justify the move. One analyst bluntly admitted, every time Biden said, no one is above the law, he was lying. Uh, some have argued that a, a different defendant, perhaps one named Hunter Smith, would have been approached uh, and handled differently by DOJ, given uh, the same sort of facts. But I, I think at the end of the day, that, that argument is a loser. Um, look, this is problematic for two obvious reasons. As has been mentioned, the president repeatedly himself and through surrogates uh, has said that he, he would not do this. And then, of course, he turned around and did it. So that's not a great look. It is true that President Biden had said he wouldn't pardon his son. And it may or may not be related, but would it change your mind at all if after you made a pledge like that, the incoming next president then announced that he planned to remove the director of the FBI and install in his place someone who has literally published a hit list of people he wants to go after once Trump is back in power. There are, are 60 names on this list. This guy published it as an appendix, as Appendix B to one of his recent books, not his series of books that describe Trump as King Donald. No, those are his three books for kids. No, the one with the 60 names on a list of who he's going to go get in Trump's name once Trump is back in power, that's a book he wrote presumably for adults. So what would you do? What would you do if after you made that pledge to not pardon your son? That's what the next president said he was going to do to U.S. law enforcement. This pardon undermines everything his administration claimed to stand for. When even your biggest cheerleaders are turning on you, you know it's bad. Back on The View, Whoopi wasn't done. She doubled down, claiming that Trump's presidency set the stage for Biden's pardon. Her logic? We've seen worse with Trump, so let's give Biden a pass. Sonny Hostin piled on suggesting that anyone criticizing Biden was simply unwilling to understand the complexity of addiction. But here's the thing. This isn't about Hunter's struggles. It's about trust, accountability, and the blatant hypocrisy of a president who promised to uphold the law for everyone, even his own family. Even comedian Jon Stewart couldn't resist weighing in. In a rare jab at the left, Stewart joked, breaking news. President Biden has issued a sweeping pardon for Hunter, covering crimes he may have committed in the past 11 years. Why 11? Not 10. Not 15. 11. Democrats have a moral perch from which they can judge without shame, hypocrisy, or nuance. Breaking news, President Biden has issued a pardon for his son, Hunter Biden. While it's refreshing to see Stewart finally address the Hunter Biden scandal, where was this energy when it actually mattered? I'm sure the pardon is a narrowly written, precisely drawn farewell note of compassion 
for a loved one. The pardon sweeping, covering offenses that Hunter Biden, quote, has committed or may have committed or taken part in over the past 11 years. <laughs> 11 years is a very specific. <laughs> and not rounded amount of time. So, Hunter, I'll give you a pardon, what, a few years, five years, ten years. It needs to be 11. Of course, no left-wing meltdown would be complete without blaming Trump. According to Whoopi and her crew, Biden's decision was less about Hunter and more about undoing the damage Trump supposedly caused to the justice system. The irony is rich. Trump spent his presidency battling investigations, many of which were fueled by the same media now bending over backward to defend Biden. This pardon isn't just about Hunter Biden. It's about a growing divide in America. Biden's promise that no one is above the law now rings hollow, further eroding trust in the system. Even Democrats are beginning to distance themselves. Political insiders are reportedly questioning whether Biden has the credibility to lead the party into the next election. Meanwhile, Trump's popularity continues to grow especially among independents who are fed up with double standards. The left is losing it, and the cracks are impossible to ignore. From Whoopi Goldberg's mental gymnastics to CNN's wild conspiracy theories, the desperation is palpable. But here's the reality. Americans are waking up. They're tired of being lied to, tired of the hypocrisy, and tired of watching elites play by a different set of rules. So, what do you think? Is this the beginning of the end for Biden's credibility? Or will his defenders find new ways to spin this scandal?